Yes, I am taking a moment to do a story time video. I am going to do a live stream the last week of October, October 2018, if you're watching this at a later date. But I was getting some ideas of what I should talk about on my live stream from my Instagram viewers. I asked them to private message me a question or comment in the request what they would like me to talk about. And I received a lot of private messages um, to do a story time. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm really not that interesting. <laughs> I'm kind of boring and I really don't have much to talk about. Then I actually had some reflection. I'm like, you know what? I do have a lot of experiences that I think people would be interested in listening to. So um, I want you guys to know that when I first started this channel, it was never meant to be about astrology. It's, a, it's still going to be about my interests. Astrology happens to be one of my interests. Now, I, I want to correct some of you guys. Some of you guys have referred to me as an astrologer. I am not an astrologer. Astrology is just something that I read about, that I've studied, that I've memorized a lot through the years. That's why when you see me speak in videos, I'm not memorizing them. That's why I have a lot of mistakes and a lot of word mess ups because I don't memorize them. I speak strictly from my brain and from what I remember. So I did want to correct you guys. Astrology is a hobby of mine. So I just want you guys to know that. Also, the channel is about my interests, not about, you know, just astrology. One of my interests is about the paranormal and the paranormal and the spiritual realm. And I want to talk about what I believe were angels, angels that I've met in real life. And I know not everybody believes in angels, but not everybody believes in astrology. In fact, I think people who believe in astrology know that there's more to this world than just things that can be proven on paper. And sometimes you got to have faith in things. And I want to talk about what I believe were angels were in my first meeting with angels. Now, what I want to tell you guys is that when I was growing up, I was severely, severely bullied. I grew up in Golden Gate, which is a part of a community in Naples, Florida. And during this time, I haven't lived there for a long time. It's been over 12 years since I've lived there. But when I was growing up as a kid, the community consisted of a lot of Latinos that were not of Mexican descent. Um, in case you guys don't know, my mother is of Mexican descent. My father is, a, is of Panamanian descent. I, I am born and raised in the United States, 100% um, American, but I'm also very proud of my Mexican background. Um, I'm proud to be of Panamanian background. Um, I always tell people that I claim my Mexican heritage more because my father never taught me Panamanian culture or their ways. If anybody wants to teach me about the Panamanian ways, I'm more than open to do that. But anyways, I was saying that because there was a lot of Latinos there that were not of Mexican culture, a lot of Caucasians. And I do want to point this out, guys. I don't generalize a whole race or a whole culture based on a bad experience. I love people individually, so I will never generalize people like that. I love everyone. I have nothing but love for all cultures, all races, all religions. I'm a very open person. I'm not going to judge you for where you came from, even if somebody of that person of that race or that culture treated me badly. But when I was growing up, I was severely picked on because I was of Mexican background and also because I was overweight as a child so I was targeted all the time so I would get beat up on the bus I would get um, like literally I would get on the bus and I would get so scared because I was one of the last stops to get picked up and by then all the seats in the bus were taken so I had to force my way into a bus seat in order to have a seat on the bus and that usually the kid that was already there would try to hit me or try to hurt me or try to get their um, friends to throw things at me. I'm not trying to get emotional, but just giving you an experience of what it was like when I was growing up. So 
around this time, let's say I was in second, no, I'm sorry, third grade. Um, there were these two little girls down the street who were sometimes nice to me, sometimes mean to me. And even though I knew that they could be very mean and cruel, when they were nice to me, I was so happy because I just wanted somebody to play with. I just wanted a friend. So these little girls decided they wanted to invite me over to their house to play. So I was like, yes, yes, I want to go play. So I went over there. And mind you, I lived in um, a part of Golden Gate. It was very boony. It was, it was the boonies. Like there was woods all around us. So, and this backyard of these of this girl's house was completely woodsy. And they had invited another little boy from next door over to play with us. So like, oh, let's go play hide and seek in the woods. So we went in the woods, but these girls knew their way around the woods. They're, they are, they were older than me, by the way, um, by, by a couple of years. So they knew their way around the woods. So did this boy. So like, let's play hide and seek. Um, at the time, I didn't realize how deep in the woods they were taking me. So of course, I was the first one. They said, okay, well, Jilly, why don't you find us? We'll hide and you go find us. So I'm like, okay, yes. Yeah. So I'm like really excited. I'm really happy. Yes, I'm playing hide and seek. I get to play. And um, so I closed my eyes and I think I was, count I, I was counting to 10. And once I stopped counting, I went looking for them. And then after a long time, I realized I couldn't find them. So I started calling out their names and nobody was coming. They had left me there. They had left me in the middle of the woods and I had no idea where I was. And I remember crying and screaming and begging them to come back and asking for help. And I don't know how long I was there. Honestly, if I remember correctly, it felt like hours, honestly. And Sorry, I'm not trying to cry. I'm trying not to get emotional. I'm not trying to be that person. <laughs> um, but out of, out of nowhere, I see these two men come through the trees, like pushing the trees away. I'm coming towards me. And I don't remember their visual, physical features. I remember they were white, though. And one of them, I remember the way they, he was dressed. He was dressed like a Quaker. Like the guy, like literally like the guy from the Quaker oatmeal canister. He was dressed like this. And as a kid, I don't, I don't realize that that's weird or that's abnormal or that's not common clothing. I, I didn't recognize it or register it at the time. I was, I was just so happy that um, there were two adults there and they found me and they asked me what was wrong. And I was like, I'm lost. I don't, I don't know how to get out of the woods. So they're like, okay, don't worry, we'll help you. And um, they walk me through the woods. And I don't know if you guys remember the, the, drive, the driveways, like in the 80s or the early 90s. They're like the two cement strips with the grass in between them, that type of driveway. Well, we were walking through the woods, and I remember right before we got to the road, there was a path that looked like those two strips of a driveway in the woods it didn't look it didn't look natural but I followed that path and it took me back to the road that would lead me back to my house and I knew my way back to my house from that road and I found it and they thought they they they're like okay you're you're fine you're good to go and I remember that path so distinctly because when the next day I went back because I wanted to see that path because it was so cool. What, what was a path like that doing in the woods? And it wasn't there the next day. Now I'm saying this story because I, as a child I didn't understand. I didn't understand that they were dressed oddly. But now as an adult I have to believe and I do believe that they were angels. Angels found me and led me back to the road that will lead me home. And I don't believe this is my only occurrence. I, I have other stories, I believe, where I've met angels, because you know angels can be in disguise. So I remember that, and I never forget that. And I always tell people, I know in my heart that those were angels, and they saved me. And Because if they weren't there, 
I don't, there's no, there's no one else who could have possibly heard me scream. I was that deep in the woods as a little child. There was no way I was going to be able to find my way back to that street. So I just wanted to share that story with you. Um, even if you don't believe in angels, if this did not make you believe in angels, at least I hope you were happy that this not pleasant story had at least had a happy ending and at least that cheered you up. And I hope that I gave some of you guys some faith and that this gave you a side of me that you didn't know was there. And I hope you enjoyed my first story time. Don't worry, I'm going to get back to your astrology. I'm going to do Virgo and Scorpio next compatibility but this is just a story time that I wanted to give my Instagram viewers who are requesting it uh, Marcus Roman I'm going to give you the shout out because you're the very first one to suggest it you've been following me for a very long time and I appreciate that um, if you guys like the story times you know you can always comment you can like share and subscribe and I hope you guys to see you guys in the next video that I do peace I love you guys.